more bite. Dab the nose. Dab the eyes. Sip of water. And I'm together. joining me on another episode of Grub and Gab with Pixie. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make my Mommy May's spicy mapo tofu. And I know there's like a ton of recipes out there to make mapo tofu, but this is the way my mom makes it and it's what I grew up eating, so I'm going to be sharing it with you guys. And today we're going to be talking about expressing your emotions, but mainly expressing love. So before I start eating and getting emotional, let me teach you how to make my Mommy May's spicy mapo tofu. As with all Chinese dishes, you wanna prep all of your ingredients before you begin to cook. First, start with two cloves of fresh garlic and mince it. Then set it aside in a bowl. Next, you want to mince up one inch of peeled fresh ginger root. And set it aside in the bowl with the garlic. Next, slice up two stalks of green onions. Then set aside the green parts in a separate bowl to add at the end of cooking. And the rest of it goes into the same bowl with the garlic and ginger. Next, you want to prepare your tofu. I got firm tofu from the refrigerated section that's 16 ounces. Any brand is fine as long as it's fresh tofu. You want to cut the package and drain the liquid that it was sitting in. And once you get it out, lightly rinse it with cold water. Then dab off the excess water with a paper towel. Next, cube up the block of tofu. You want to make sure you cut it up into about relatively the same size so it cooks and seasons evenly in the pan. and set it aside in a bowl. Next, make your cornstarch slurry, which is just one tablespoon of cornstarch with two tablespoons of water and mixed well. Once you have your ingredients prepped, make sure they're all set out with an easy reach next to the stove. And now you're ready to cook. Heat one tablespoon of vegetable oil in a pan over medium heat. Then add the garlic, ginger, and green onions and saute over medium heat for about two to three minutes. Next, Add your meat. I used ground pork. We're using a quarter of a pound, so it's half of this package. And mix it well with the aromatic herbs. Stirring frequently, you want to make sure it continues to cook on medium heat for about five minutes. Then you want to add your sauces. Start by adding the black bean garlic sauce. I use the Lee Kum Kee brand because it's not as salty as some of the other brands. We're going to add two tablespoons of that. Then we're going to add one tablespoon of ground chili paste. If you want it spicier, feel free to add more. Next, add a sprinkling of about half a teaspoon of white sugar and about one to two teaspoons of soy sauce, depending on how salty your black bean sauce is. 
Mix everything well to ensure that all the meat is coated with the sauce. And let it continue to cook for just about three more minutes. Next, we'll add the tofu. Once you add the tofu in, you want to carefully and gently mix it in with the meat and sauce mixture so you don't break up the cubes. Make sure each of the tofu cubes are coated well with the sauce. And let it simmer for about 3 to 5 minutes. Next, add a quarter cup of water or broth. Add your cornstarch slurry. I'm using about 2 tablespoons of it because that's enough to thicken up the liquid that's in the pan. Carefully and gently mix the tofu cubes after you add the cornstarch slurry so everything can get coated with a nice thickened sauce. Then you add your saved green onion tops and a drizzle of sesame seed oil. Let it simmer together for about two more minutes, and you're done. I like to serve this over a hot, steamed white rice, or you can serve it over noodles if you prefer. Before you serve it up, make sure you mix gently to ensure that the sesame seed oil and the green onions are mixed well with the rest of the tofu. The written recipe, along with some ingredient substitution, is available on my website, pixienoms.com. Ta-da! And that's how you make my mom's spicy mapo tofu. Um, I got a new table here for this uh, food display, so... I'm really not used to like uh, the angles of everything, so this will either be super fun and it works out great, or it's going to be a disaster as I gesture and it like knocks it over and probably doesn't help that I'm making these wild gestures now. Anyway, here's the spoon. And so I'm going to go ahead and take a bite of this mapa tofu. I've been craving this dish for a while because it's something my mom made when we were growing up and it's kind of like comfort food to me. My stomach was growling as I was cooking this because I wanted to eat it so bad. It's been really tasty ginger and it's important that you use fresh ginger because it has way more flavor and you need it to get the flavor into the tofu and everything. There's a little bit of meat, mainly for the flavor. It's not really a meaty meat dish. Mainly you want it for the sauce and the tofu and to have something delicious to eat over rice. Set that there. Add another dangerous thing to knock over to this equation because why not? I really kind of wish that the neighbor's car alarm would just stop beeping over every little thing. It's been going off periodically like all freaking morning. Just wait it up. And it's done. Like magic. All right, so now that I'm all settled and situated here, let's talk about expressing love. Uh, on a more serious note, my Auntie Mei Yin passed away, and it really got me to thinking about how her and I didn't really talk or communicate too much. She lives in Taiwan, I live in San Francisco, and the distance was a factor, you know, but we did have each other as you know on social media Facebook and we did communicate back and forth every now and then but it was mainly to express our love for each other you know language was a little bit of a barrier but she learned English so that she could talk to me and my brother a little easier and no matter what 
we said to one another, we would always say, I love you. It didn't matter if um, she didn't understand everything that I was saying. Uh, she would have, you know, one of her sons, one of my cousins translate it for her. Um, but no matter what, we would always tell each other that we love each other. She was a very caring and loving person. And I'm sorry I'm crying, but I just love her so much. And I'm sad that we no longer have such a bright spirit and soul here on this earth. But with her passing, it really got me to thinking about how it doesn't matter how often you talk to people or the ones you love. The most important thing is that you let them know frequently and often how much you do love them. Let me gather myself here <laughs> and try not to be such a red eye wreck on this video. Um, Basically, what I wanted to say was that in society today, I feel like if you are someone, oh God, there's that goddamn horn again. You know, I'm just going to eat through the beeping this time. I've done some crying. Now let's do some eating. So I feel that in society today, if you kind of express your emotions too much or too frequently, it's kind of seen as a negative thing. Like that person is so emotional, you know, instead of seeing as them being empathetic or expressive, they're deemed emotional as if it's a bad thing. Now I understand there's certain situations where, yeah, you do need to keep yourself in check. But I feel like with friends and family, especially people you care about, you should be able to express how much you love them as frequently as you want to without fear of being judged. Like with me, I always tell my mom and dad whenever I'm done talking to them, be it on the phone, via text messages, I tell them that I love them. Even if they irritate the hell out of me, even if I'm not happy, you know, if they tell me something and I'm mad at them, if we're done talking on the phone, I tell them that I love them and that I miss them. And, you know, same with my friends who don't live nearby. I always let them know that I love them whenever I talk to them. Basically, I let people who are important in my life know how much that I care about them because if anything should ever happen, I don't want to have any regrets of either them not knowing how I felt about them or me not being able to let them know how I felt about them. And it's not that I live in fear that, you know, everything could come crashing to an end at any moment or something horrific might happen to all my friends or family at any moment. It's just the way that I feel, that I feel like I need to tell them I love them just so that they are 100% absolutely sure that I am the crazy person who loves them so very much and wants to let them know like every minute and every day of their life. I'm not saying that everyone should start running around telling everyone I love you, I love you, I love you. Everyone expresses love in their own different ways and I feel like as long as the people who are most important to you in your life know how much you care and love them, then that's the most important thing. Um, doesn't matter <laughs> if it seems clingy or, you know, over emotional on how much or how often you express it. I just feel like, you know, anyone should be able to say, I love you or, hey, just want to let you know that I appreciate you as a friend and I care for you deeply at any time they want without fear of repercussions or being labeled in a bad light, if that makes sense. Let me shovel this into my mouth faster. I just feel like people should really express how they feel about people if they care and love for them. They shouldn't be afraid of saying it too often. 
And I know some people aren't comfortable with it and everyone has their different styles, but I maybe I'm just trying to find justification for smothering all of my friends and family and everyone that I care about in love. Maybe I'm just trying to encourage people to connect more with one another and let the people who you care about in your life know that you do deeply, deeply care about them. Because nothing's wrong with throwing a little more love out there in the world. Maybe I'll do the last bite song with that horn as a beat. Last bite, 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 last bite. All right, in it goes. And we're done. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching another episode of Grub and Gab with me, Pixie. Time to go wash the dishes. So until next time, toodles. Bye. Thanks for watching. nervous holding this up like all the tofu might f fall out onto the table tofu tofu